Hello everyone, it's Danielle Grieve here from Activity Mix, one of the event managers. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce today Dr. Catherine Rowland. She is here to help provide some nutritional advice over the seven week challenge to help you improve the best you can on your fitness. And she'll have some great advice. So she's gonna do this over three installments. Some of the other things she's gonna cover is things to eat to help with your stress, immune system and tiredness. She'll also cover nutrition for training, so what you need to have before and after training um, to help you get the best you can out of your sessions. But today, she's going to start off with eating well and talking about food groups, portions, and how alcohol fits into eating well and how it will affect your training. So, good luck to everyone in the Team Health Challenge, and we hope this helps you along the way. Eating a healthy, balanced diet plays an essential role in maintaining a healthy weight, which is an important part of overall good health. Now, to perform well in life and in the Team Health Challenge, it's important to have a varied, balanced diet. The Eat Well plate makes healthy eating easier to understand by giving a visual representation of the different types and proportions of foods needed for a healthy and well-balanced diet. The Eat Well plate is based on the five food groups. You have starchy foods, which consist of bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, and other starchy foods. And these should make up around one third of everything we eat, which means we should really base our meals around these foods. Potatoes, for example, are an excellent choice of starchy food and a good source of fiber. And if you leave the skins, you can actually incorporate more fiber and vitamins in that way. And where possible, try to look at using whole grain or wholemeal varieties of starchy foods, because these tend to contain more fiber, as well as more vitamins and minerals than white varieties. Then you have the fruit and vegetables, and these are a vital source of vitamins and minerals, and we're actually advised to eat anywhere between five to seven portions of variety of fruit and vegetables in a day. And there's actually evidence that people who eat at least five portions a day are at lower risk of heart disease, stroke, and some cancers. Then we have the milk and dairy foods, and these incorporate uh, cheese and yogurt, and these are good sources of protein. They also contain calcium, which is very good for bone health. And to enjoy the health benefits of dairy generally without eating too much fat, uh, we suggest using semi-skimmed milk, skimmed milk, or even 1% fat milk. And where possible, eating lower-fat hard cheeses or cottage cheese and lower-fat yogurt. Then we have meat, fish, eggs, and beans. These are all good sources of protein, which is essential for growth and repair of the body. They're also good sources of a range of vitamins and minerals. Meat is a good source of protein, vitamins, and minerals, such as iron, zinc, and B vitamins. Where possible, try to eat lean cuts of meat and skinless poultry to cut down on the amount of fat, and always cook your meat thoroughly. Fish is another important source of protein, and also contains many vitamins and minerals. Oily fish is particularly rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And oily fish should include um, salmon, mackerel, trout, herring, fresh tuna, sardines, and pilchards. When you're looking at non-oily fish, you're looking at haddock, plaice, coli, cod, tin tuna, skate, and hake. Ideally, you'd aim for at least two portions of fish a week, including one portion of oily fish. You can choose from either fresh, frozen, or canned fish, but canned and smoked fish can be high in salt. You also have eggs and pulses, especially if you're a vegetarian, uh, which include beans, nuts, and seeds, and are also great sources of protein. Nuts are high in fiber and a good alternative to snacks and high in saturated fat, but they do still contain high levels of fat and therefore energy, so eat them in moderation. Finally, we have fat and sugar, and these are both sources of energy for the body, but when we eat too much of them, we consume more energy than we burn, and this can mean that we put on weight. And we have to be careful with that, uh, because obviously putting on weight increases our risk of type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and stroke. We also need to bear in mind that there are different types of fat. In saying that, the body needs all types of fat to be able to fully absorb all vitamins and minerals. You have saturated fats, which are considered to be the bad fats, and these can be found in cheese, sausages, butter cakes, uh, biscuits, and pies. And the problem with this is they do lead to an increase in cholesterol and increase your risk of heart disease. 
On the other hand, you have the healthy fats, also called unsaturated fats, and these help lower the cholesterol levels. And here you're looking at eating things like oily fish, nuts and seeds, avocados, olive oils, and vegetable oils. And where possible, you want to try to cut down on foods that are high in saturated fat and have smaller amounts of foods that are rich in unsaturated fat instead. The key to a healthy diet is to do the following. First of all, you need to eat the right number of calories for how active you are so that you balance the energy you consume with the energy you use and you don't become overweight. Then you have to eat a wide range of foods to ensure that you're getting a balanced diet and that your body is receiving all the nutrients it needs. You also need to be careful with the amount of salt that you eat. And even if you don't add salt to your food, you may still be eating too much. About three quarters of the salt we eat is already in the food we buy, such as breakfast cereals, soups, breads, sauces, and ready meals. And eating too much salt can raise your blood pressure. You also need to restrict the amount of alcohol you drink. Men should not regularly drink more than three to four units of alcohol a day and women should not regularly drink more than two to three units a day. And if you've had a heavy drinking session, you should really avoid drinking for at least 48 hours. An example of what I, I mean as a unit is, for example, uh, a gin, rum, or vodka, whiskey, or tequila, sambuca. So if you're looking at a large a single measure of spirit, you're looking at about 1.4 unit. If you take a bottle of red wine, a 750 ml bottle of white or rosé wine, and this contains about 10 units. So really, for a glass of red white, white or rosé wine, if you have a small glass, you're looking at 1.6 units. And if you're having a large glass, you're looking at 3.3 units. In terms of beer, or lager or cider, uh, depending on how much alcohol is in the bottle, um, if you have a 4% alcohol a lager, for example, and you have a can of it, you're looking at 1.8 units, or for a pint, you're looking at 2.3 units. So really, this adds up quite quickly. Finally, you should really restrict your intake of processed foods. And by processed foods, I mean food not found as is in nature. And the reason for this is because they're likely to be higher in fat, sugar, and salt. Thank you, Dr. Roland, for that really informative soundbite. We hope that all of you found it very useful. Make sure you keep an eye out on social media for the next release. And until then, keep up with the improvements and good luck.